Well, here we are in the north, my spiritual home. Well, not quite, it's a little bit further north than that. We're in Hull, we're at Majestic Pool. A lot of you guys ask us to uh, film venues further north. So we left sunny Essex this morning at about 10 o'clock and four and a half hours later, we're here at Majestic Pool. We've had a quick look around and the wind is absolutely hacking into a swim called the Reedy. So I think the first port of call is to get the gear in there and have a look from there. Right, we're in the swim, um, got three rods out. Everything's looking very good, to be honest. Um, like I said earlier on, we're on the end of a southwesterly, the biggest wind that's been blown for months. Big low pressure, big moon last night. Uh, I've got to say, it's looking really good. Um, the rods are out, I've got two out in open water. Since we're setting up, I've seen two fish going one, one area. So I've covered that area with two rods at the moment. Got a pop-up out there and a balanced bottom bait and I've got one down on the reed line. This wind's hacking into the reed line, it just screams fish. Um, I've not seen a walk before. We've purposely not tried to find any information about likely spots, so we tried to go on it on the day and see what's looking good. The reed line looks good because the wind's just hammering into it. And the other spot, well, I've seen two fish out in open water, covered it with two rods. We've not put a lot of bait out at the moment, simply because I've seen fish. I don't want to spook them. I want to see if I've got a chance of picking up a fish up before I start putting too much bait over the reds. So it's looking good, but it is breezy. I've even had to, had to turn the sensitivity down on the NTXRs because it's blowing the bobbins around. Put a little extra five gram weight on just to control the, uh, control the bobbins and try and get a decent line layout there. Uh, but it's looking good. But um, it's been a long day, a bit of traveling, a bit of walking around, trying to work out which swim to go for. And uh, I think it's about time to put the barbecue on, kick back and relax for the evening. Here we go, first evening. And one of those uh, rods that are put up to where we've seen a couple of fish has whistled off. I think this is a little uh, balanced bottom bait. And we've got a fish on. So yeah, I think that the single bait approach on this occasion has definitely worked. You know, maybe we wouldn't have got this bait, this bite, should I say, if we'd have spotted out a load of bait or put a load of bait over the top of its head. You know, if you've got an area where you're seeing fish, then they're obviously there for a reason, so you don't need to, or I personally feel you don't need to put a load of bait in over the top of them. Try and get an early bite on a single. And uh, it's paid dividends this time. Oh, and so. Ooh, hey, I. It's stripping me. Go. <laughs> Excellent. A very northern carp. Cool. Check that out. What an awesome start. And the first evening is one of the rods that we've cast to the fish that we've seen, the two fish that we've seen. This one was on the, the balanced bottom bait on the running lead rig. And uh, yeah, the furthest, the furthest north I've ever caught fish, even for a northerner, that's pretty good. And uh, what makes it even better is 20 pound and six ounces. I'm sure you'll agree. What an absolute minter. It's an awesome fish. So yeah, well, Hopefully, try and catch another one this evening or tomorrow morning. And tomorrow we'll get a little bit more opportunity to talk you through the rig and show you.
sure exactly how we caught it. Great start though, awesome start. And another one. Just to the right. That that would have been where I'm picking liners up. That range towards the, the bush, the tree. <laughs> but that's two. There's a bit more activity showing now, so. Yeah. Well, the hours of darkness were pretty uneventful. Um, but just as it was going dark, we saw a couple of fish. Um, but the wind dropped right off and there was a bit of a chill in the air for the first time for a couple of months, really, last night. But, it, you know, no fish, it didn't produce anything. But this morning, the wind's picked up again big time. And I've had a little change of tact. Uh, I've moved the rod from out of the corner near the rushes, uh, as I've seen a fish just off a bush that's halfway down the no fishing bank. I saw a fish there, so I'll put a single pop-up onto it. And then about half an hour, 40 minutes later, uh, I saw another fish over it. Since then, I've been getting a couple of liners on that right-hand rod. So there's fish in the area. They're not a million miles away. But last night, the uh, the rod that we caught on was a, a little balanced bottom bait rig. Only a short piece of five inches of Camatech soft, a big hook, just a little bit of cork drilled into the uh, the bottom of the bottom bait, just to negate the weight of it a little bit. Ooh, now you can feel that breeze now blowing hard. And uh, yeah, that was the rod that produced. I had two rods on that spot, the, the little hinge stiff rig that you've seen me use before, and the bottom bait. It was the bottom bait that went. It's hard to assess whether the bottom bait was the key or the pop-up, but on this occasion last night, the bottom bait didn't do any harm, obviously, because I caught on it. So I've stuck with that, that little tact. Um, and uh, we put a little bit more bait out the sea uh, this morning just over that spot because I know it's produced and we've seen a couple of fish there. But I think one of the main reasons why I caught on that rod yesterday evening is the water's a day ticket water. You don't know who's been in the swim before you. You don't know how much bait's been put into the water. And those, we touched on it last night, but those few fish that we saw, were there. they must have been there for a reason, whether or not there was um, bait that was been out there from the weekend that the fish have started to eat or there's a bit of weed growth there or there's some naturals or something but the fish were showing us where they were and so I took a softly softly approach and uh, didn't really feel any need to put any bait out there I just fished it with a little stringer and just 10 baits scattered over the top of it and the reason why we you know we only put a little bit of bait in there is you, you can't take the bait out once you put it in but you can always add to it if you need to so it definitely worked on this occasion and uh, I'll talk you through the rig that caught the fish and uh, show you what it was all about. That's a major kite down the right hand margin. Just as the rain starts, so the wind's proving a bit tricky. Couldn't really work out why we are not had a bite today. It's just looked really good for it. Certainly fighting fit. Can't be far off now. Looking good, looking good. Yes. Happy days. There we go. Fish number two. 14 and a half pound. Lovely scaly mirror. And as previously mentioned, I've been using the running rigs on this session. So perfect opportunity to show the lead set up and explain the reasons for using it. Now I initially started using a three ounce lead simply because, as we previously mentioned, there was a couple of fish in the area. I didn't really want to disturb them dramatically, so I went through a three ounce lead uh, and I fixed it in place using the little T-bar. After I caught the fish, I decided that I want to put a little bit more bait out. I could probably get away with creating a little bit more disturbance, and therefore I swapped it over to my preferred size of lead when using a running, when using a running lead, and that's a five ounce lead. The thing with a running rig is, to make it work really effectively, you need the lead to stay put. You don't want it moving at all. You want the fish to pick up the rig and to be able to pull the line through without moving the lead. And obviously a five ounce lead helps you to achieve that. Now, 
one of the plus points about the angle drop-off run ring kit is that, as you can see, it allows the, the swivel to articulate and move. Therefore, it's always finding the point of least resistance, encouraging it to run freely and not move the lead. However, because I decided to go with the, the five ounce lead, I didn't want the lead swinging around whilst I'm playing the fish. So it allows me then to use it drop off style. So I, I took away the T-peg and I used one of the PVA strips. You simply pass the strip back through, pull it into position and then snip it off on the other side. This way, I'm now using the rig effectively, but once the PVA melts, the leg can pull free. There's enough tension in the clip to allow it to, to wind the lead back in, should you want to recast at any point, but there's just enough friction that should the fish pick it, that should I get in contact with the fish, I can eject the lead so I'm not swinging the five ounce lead around whilst I'm playing the fish. So that's what's done the business for us. What we'll do is just talk you through the indication and how I set that up just to make the most out of the running lead. One of the other advantages about using running leads is indication. As long as you've got everything balanced correctly, you can get really positive bite indication. You generally don't get uh, drop backs because if the fish is swimming towards you, it's got to pull line through the, the ring on the heavy lead to come back towards you, so you get a positive, positive indication and the bobbin rises. Also, if you've got some big old wary carp, and sometimes they tend to kite on a tight line, they can't do that with a running lead because it, it, it's not moving the lead, it's got to move the line. As it pulls, pulls away from the lead, it's taking line up. And generally what that will mean is it's taking the slack that you've set to your indicator. So it's pulling through. It's pulling through the lead and it's taking up the line. Again, you get positive indication straight away. The way I've set my bobbins up today is I've, I've got the micro heads, the black label bobbins with the micro heads on. But because it's a bit windy, I've had to add the five gram weights onto them. The five gram weights are combating the wind, so I'm not getting any, any of the line moving because of the wind. So it's just allowing me to balance it correctly. <clears throat> I've got a nice slack line out there, so I've got a, a, an area around the lead, which is on the bottom, um, creating a safe area for the fish. But then as soon as I've got, as soon as the fish picks up the bait, and as soon as it moves, the line is transmitted all the way through to the indicator and the indicator moves. The lead staying put. The other good thing about it is the fish is, it's not attached to a weight, it's not attached to a lead, which is quite often the case nowadays with people using lead clips and um, helicopters and such. So it's a little bit different for them. They've picked the bait up and they're, they're moving and they, they, they can't feel any resistance. You get the indication through until it hits the line clip and then the fish picks up and, and moves away. So it's a really good method for trying to trick those wary carp. Since I started using these running leads again, uh, back in last winter, I did a little bit with them. I'm pretty convinced that I've added an extra few fish on the bank for me. So it's a bit different from the norm. And as long as you've got your setup balanced perfectly, it's a brilliant way of getting great indication. There you can see the uh, running leg clip minus the lead. It's done exactly what we wanted it to. And it's helped us bank number three. There we go, fish number three. 17 pounds and six ounces. A lovely stunning scaly mirror again. And uh, the running rig's definitely doing the business now. So I'm confident of maybe another bite or two. barbecue on my face. Oh, 
Three. There we are. There we go, number four. Well, check that one out. Fish number four, 24 pounds and two ounces. I'm absolutely buzzing with that one. It's a cracking looking fish. And uh, just shows that uh, there is some great carp fishing up in the north. There's a little bit of light left. This may be the last one of the session. And if it is, I'm really tough to end on a fish like this. But you never know. We've got the night, we've got the morning before we embark on the four and a half hour journey back home. But I'm pleased with the result. I think it was well worth the journey down here. So there we go, majestic pool cracker. Well, it was another uneventful night. However, at first light this morning, I've had a quick double pickup. We've only one left, one rod left. The middle rod's whizzed off. I've had to give Harry a shout to wake him up because I'm a little bit of a pickle. But what we'll try and do is get this one in the net with that one and then deal with the one in the the STR sling, so we can sort the other two out. Here comes the tricky bit. Got to try and get this one in the net. I was keeping the other one in the bottom. And when they're fighting fit like these fish, I might think it might make things a little tasty. go. Oh, there we go. Now I've got a little predicament of sorting them two out. Well there's the first one of this morning's double take. 19 pound and 14 ounces. I have a sneaky suspicion that the other two might be a little bit bigger. So I'll weigh those up and find out what those are. Well there we go. There's the uh, other culprit from the double take. Another 20 for the session, 23 pounds and six ounces. It's a bit of a brute. One more to go, we'll get that one out and have a look at that one in a minute. Well, that's the fish you've just seen me playing. Fish number seven, and 20 pound and number four, at 22 pounds and 10 ounces. It's a bit of a brute of a fish. And it's been a really enjoyable session. The fish have behaved like proper carp. Crashing, showing, fizzing up at times, getting liners, then we're getting bites. And uh, yeah, I'd like to thank Danny and Phil for letting us come down here. And to top it off with four Yorkshire 20s, I'd have been buzzing with that at home. So we'll slip this one back and make the journey home with a smile on our faces. If you'd like to watch more videos from Fox Fishing TV, then click the link here. Or if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, then click the link here.